All right, what is up, KNBR heads? Welcome to another episode, pre-recorded uh, version of, well, I guess they're all pre-recorded, of the practice squad. Sometimes we do lives. Uh, we yeah, have to, sometimes. We have to adjust on the fly, but welcome everybody to the practice squad. Myself, Walter Ricardo, said that alongside me virtually uh, at a disclosed location in, where, where are you at, Derek? Well, then it wouldn't be disclosed if I give away my, my location. <laughs> very, very good. I, I almost gave away your location. I was like, oh, well, I'll let him do it. I'll let Sneaky him do it. Sneaky attempt there, Walter. Should he, should he want attempt. to? Derek Papa, what is up, my guy? Oh, I am dandy, my friend. I'm dandy. Are you dandy? Yes. Uh, even though I didn't do very well in picks, I guess. No, dude, you got your ass kicked in the picks. Uh, just got to yeah. tell full, full disclosure. Uh, I started off the the season with our picks, and, and we'll get to the pickums uh, here in a little bit. We'll we'll look forward to uh, to week seven, but I was not doing good. I, I had I had an atrocious start. I think week one, I I only got one game right. I think I went one one five and two or something. I had two pushes uh, in, in week one. Yeah, it was it was not good. Not a good start. But in the post baseball season era of my picks, Derek. 13 and two eat s mm. as, 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 uh, as tacky would say, eat uh, he would say that <laughs> no, it just, it, it just goes to show that you're more focused right now, but, uh, we haven't Locked done in. a good job of coming up with punishments on this show. We so I not, say, go ahead, I go ahead. say it should be an accumulative thing. I think okay. that we tally it up at the end of the year and then it's a big old punishment because it's just too difficult. Like, you know, we we do these sometimes. You know, Wednesday nights or Thursday mornings, yeah. and it's just it's just hard to come up with a punishment each week unless we have like you know hot sauce or some creative thing like that. But I say let's just wait till the end of the season, and we'll we'll tally this whole thing up, and then someone will have to do something embarrassing, like Walter possibly having to don the future World Series champion okay. Dodger jerseys. Stop it! Stop it! It's trending in that directions, man. Yeah, well, that, we'll save that for another day. I don't even, I don't even want to think that into existence, Derek. How dare you? How dare you put that? They're up two one. You, you got to think universe. about it. You got to think about it. Yeah, I've been squirming. I mean, that's been enough of, of a punishment. I mean, to to tally up my losses for the year, just having to watch the the Dodgers uh, go further into the postseason. I just, I just hate it. It's, it's yeah. the worst. You know what I was thinking about? You guys should uh, be used to it at this point. I was thinking about because on on Bart. Uh, it is the best time to kind of think about yes. random things, right? You're lost in your thoughts, and and Bart is is sometimes a disgusting place. So I saw somebody having a tuna sandwich. Uh, that is a move on Bart. So mm. then it got me thinking. I was like, hmm, Duke's mayo bowl. Bowl. Someone someone took a mayo bath. Is that is that a punishment? Uh. Is that something? How how do you feel about mayo? Because if you know me, and I don't know if you know this part about me, Derek, uh, anything white substance, it, I, I just don't, substance, substance is, is <laughs> I do not do well Go with this. Go on. Especially, <laughs> nice voice crack. Uh, <laughs> I, I do not do good with mayo. I do not good, do good with I, 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 what other white substances do you not do well with, Walter? <laughs> well, well, we'll keep that off the off the podcast. All right, okay. Um, but uh, but yeah, dude, white w mayo, mayo. Uh, the Mayonnaise. smell, the sound, Hellman. the taste, everything. I just, I just can't Actually, that's glue. do it. Do you, I can't. <laughs> are you terrible with glue as El well? El Elmer's. Yeah. Uh, no, Hellman's is mayonnaise. Elmer's is glue. That's right. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Elmer's glue. Uh, I don't, I don't really have a problem with. With glue, I mean, I mean that's that's gross too. But all, but also, I mean, yeah, you know what? I did have a problem as a kid when I'd pour out the Elmers and I'd like yeah. kind of put my hands in it. Yeah, and get all pasty. It, it was it was it was gross. Ew! You you um, ate glue as a kid? You're one of those no, kids? No, 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 no. I didn't eat it. I, I was just you know I, I I was feeling it. Why would you feel it? I don't know. It's starting to get weird. More more weird as we continue yeah. to talk about this. So. You 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 and your white substance. Uh... Okay, I, guess. Derek, I see. I see where you're going. Yeah, I. I, I you're I, you're I, the one that said it, Walter. I'm. I'm. I'm just along hey, for the ride. I. I usually stick with the. Uh, with the glue sticks is is how I well, use glue. So I don't mind mayonnaise, but I think you. I think you know this about me, Walter. Is uh, in the communal kitchen that we have at KMBR, there is uh -huh. a squeezable 
mayonnaise no, that bottle. Disgusting. That is disgusting. And I, I'm with you. I don't mind eating mayonnaise. I like mayonnaise on my on my sandwiches, but I like to spread mm-hmm. the mayonnaise. The sound it makes and the look of it when you squeeze it, oh, disgusting. Geez. Absolutely disgusting. Oh, okay, I, th- I thought you were going to say that that was uh, like bliss to your ears or something. Oh, God, no. Uh, I no. thought that's the direction that you were going. No. Copes, Copes <laughs> makes fun of me every time where I'm like, oh, this is so gross. He's like, you're eating the mayonnaise. Why do you give a shit? And I'm like, because the way it comes out is kind of the you know important as well it's important for oh her. dude yeah it's disgusting so anyway yeah, we football can discuss, we, can, we can discuss punishments and all that kind of stuff that's kind of where yeah. we all got off on that i think tangent. i think i want to see you in a dodger jersey but the way this is going right now I, I, it looks like i'll have to do the punishment uh, yeah it, it is it has not been good for you man you you have gone uh, i should have texted you the night losing. before about the raider game because as soon as i saw that jacoby Change. myers was not going to yeah. play along with everybody yeah. else i was like yeah this isn't this is going to happen yeah, it was bad. We'll go. We'll go over that uh, as we get into Gridiron Gab and into our uh, producer pickums for Week Seven. But uh, let's kind of start it off. Upon further review, man, the 49ers started off the week, Week Six, uh, against the Seattle Seahawks in Seattle on Thursday Night Football, and they delivered. They they did they did what they needed to do. Uh, I took them with the points and outright win. I felt that they were a more dominant team. Then the Seahawks, I mean, you factor in all the teams that the Seahawks had played to that point, and reality kind of set in for the Seahawks fans uh, and for the 12th man up in Seattle to where, you know, who they were playing against, th- that's a factor of why they were at the at the top of the NFC West. So uh, they kind of came back to really reality a little bit. 49ers showed out and did what they needed to do and finally won. I wouldn't say that it is an impressive win. I mean, obviously going to Seattle and winning against a rival being that the two prior games lost horribly, or Mm -hmm. I guess not two prior games, but two two prior uh, uh, division matchups against the Rams and the the Cardinals. So this was a pivotal matchup for the 49ers going into it. They needed to win it. I mean, we were discussing it last week was, is it a, is it a a must win and and all that kind of stuff, whatever you want to want to feel. I felt like it was a must win for the fact that it was a rival, uh, you're already 0-2 in the division. You, you're you dropping games left and right in the NFC. They went up to Seattle, took care of business. But again, it is Seattle. They have a huge test this weekend. Their biggest test, I think, of the of the season and kind of these next back-to-back. And, and I, I guess we'll talk about a little bit later uh, with the Cowboys if that's if that's necessarily a test because they got they got demolished. Uh, this weekend against the Lions, but uh, what were your takeaways from the Niners up in Seattle? I mean, they they looked they looked the part, but again, you got to kind of kind of factor in that they were playing Seattle, who who was, in my opinion, a lesser team. No, I mean, I think that uh, I think they're watching the Seahawks the last few weeks. Uh, they started off pretty well, but they kind of like come back to reality a little bit. I'm not that impressed with them as far as an overall team. I think at some points they play good defense, but. I don't know if it's going to work out there with Geno Smith and you know the, the the current roster that they have. I think that Mike McDaniel yeah. will or Mike McDonald will eventually make some changes there. But um, anytime you go on the road for a divisional matchup and win, I think that's impressive. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean the Niners are the better team, and they were more focused than I've seen them in quite some time. Even against the Patriots, I think they played their best football. So this was the best performance they've had. Probably since week one, maybe. Um, Jordan Mason ran well. Brock Purdy played a great game. I thought the game plan that Kyle Shanahan came up with surprisingly was very similar to the one he had a year ago in, on Thanksgiving against the Seahawks, where he had McCaffrey and Debo line up in the backfield together, and you couldn't tell who's getting the ball, who's the wide receiver, who's the running back. And they did that a little bit on Thursday night, um, even though it was a, de- a different defensive scheme. Uh, Pete Carroll not there anymore, Mike McDonald. Um, overall, I thought it was a good performance from Brock, Brock Purdy. Uh, the touchdown pass to Debo Samuel, not the most perfect throw, but he got it there, and Debo did the rest of the, you know, uh, went, went the rest of the way. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the defense played fairly well. They kind of crept back into the game a little bit where, you know, you were kind of nervous it was going to be a uh, recreation of the last few NFC West games where they right. had big leads on the Rams and big leads on. A uh, big lead on the Ram and a Rams and a big lead on the Cardinals, mm-hmm. and they were up twenty three to three. And then the Seahawks score two touchdowns. You're thinking, oh no, are they come back in this game. So the Niners hung tough, um, and yeah, I thought they played really good defense. I thought the story of this game was Malik Mustafa 
and Renardo Green stepping up again in interceptions with a depleted secondary. Traverius yeah. Ward out for this game. I thought that DK Metcalf maybe run was going to run wild on the secondary, and that did not happen. Renardo Green at times got beat, for, but for the most part, stood his own ground. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I thought that you know I, if they were playing a big a better opponent, then maybe this game would have gone a different way. I thought Geno Smith threw some bad passes in this game. Um, but for the most part, I thought the Niners played a clean game. They survived without Jordan Mason in the second half, him getting a shoulder injury and yep. really only taking one carry and not coming back in that game. We'll see if he's going to be healthy for this game against the Chiefs this week. But Isaac Garendo filling in, um, I don't know if that's going to bode well. I think he played fine, but for the most part, he got most of his 99 yards on that 76-yard run at the very end. Right. Um, so we'll see if he has to fill in for Jordan Mason or Patrick Taylor. And I, by the way, I found it hilarious when Kyle Shanahan did his post-game presser and he was like, yeah, yeah, um, Taylor, what's his name? Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of guys in the football team, so that happens sure. sometimes. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, George Kittle, the, the biggest problem was probably the red zone again. Like they're still not scoring in the red zone. Um, yeah. George Kittle basically is that guy in the red zone for them right now. Um, so yeah. I think that they got the win. I want to ask you, though. Isaac yep. Arendo, did he get caught on that play, or do you think he slid? Uh, I I think it was a combination of both. Yeah, like he didn't fight to go anymore. He, yeah, as like, soon he, as he like got he, caught, he slid to the ground. As soon as he felt someone creeping on him, he was just like, oh, damn. Maybe he had like a moment of realization. He was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't score here. Maybe I should I should take a dive. You know, I'm conflicted on this because initially I was like, yeah, good idea. Go down. He's a smart player. But they still had two timeouts, the Seahawks. Right. And they ended up scoring anyway. They gave it to Juice. So you could have gone either way there. Um, Either way, I think you would have won the game if you just run it a couple times and kneel. Um, The Seahawks would have called two timeouts. I I don't think that he started his slide before contact. Yes. I mean, yeah. But it makes he, me he, wonder, though, who who were the people on the sideline screaming to him saying, go down? I don't know. It's probably, maybe, probably the Seahawks. <laughs> yeah, he, he listens to the wrong people. <laughs> Thought that was my bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, dude. Yeah, no. Uh, Isaac Garendo, I mean, it's going to be really interesting. And then as we get closer to the uh, to the trade deadline, right? I mean, potential running backs that the 49ers could can, – can, uh, can, No, 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 no. You, you, don't, no. you don't think they're going to go get a, a running back? Nope. I think no? McCaffrey will come back in a few weeks here. Right. Um, and I think they have good depth right now. If I know anything of Kyle Shanahan, he's not going to go trade for a running back. I know. He's going I know, to but, pick but Raheem, up a running back. But Raheem Mostert's out there. I'm just saying you can probably get him cheap. Why Why? Why wouldn't the Dolphins use Raheem Mostert? I mean, because the Dolphins are going to be – they're going to be cooked. I mean, what, what's their what's their season record right now? They I are know. two and four. They're not going to make the playoffs. Or they're two, two and fall three. three. They're, they're two and three. Two and three. They're going to fall behind. I, I don't think that, uh, I mean, depending on when Tua can come back, I mean, I don't even know if we have any determination on that. Isn't it overkill, though, to go get Raheem Mostert when you're anticipating that Christian McCaffrey's it, coming back? It is, but how how confident are you? And I guess it's more of a fan question than a team question because if you ask Kyle Shanahan, I mean, they're, they're confident that Christian's going to come back and, and yes. be the player that he's going to be. But as m- myself, a 49er fan, you want to, you want to kind of hedge all of your players and, and you want to be able to have the depth. That's the thing that, that when you look at this 49er team, as it's constructed, they don't have a lot of depth outside of their star players. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, Christian McCaffrey, with Jordan Mason coming in and doing what he was doing and Isaac Garendo uh, contributing last, I mean, I did not feel good about the running back depth at the beginning of the season than I do now because now you're starting to see yeah. the products of a Kyle Shanahan system. But if there is, I mean, would you rather have, you know, Raheem Mostert or would you rather have Isaac Garendo uh, back there running? Isaac Garendo, I think at this point right now... Yeah, I, I don't think the Niners need to go out and trade for a 32-year-old Raheem Mostert. When, and I think that McCaffrey at some point will come back. And I think when you have all at these guys... Level, though, at what level, though, is McCaffrey going to be? That, that, that's my biggest concern. Is like, is he going to be 100%? Is it going to be... I mean, obviously, you'd like to have a Christian McCaffrey even at a 70%. I don't think he's coming back unless he's 100%. Okay. 
So I think that's what this this all is is precautionary. I mean, he could he come yeah. out. I mean, I, I, I if this was a playoff, if 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 these first you know five weeks this is going to sound stupid, but if if these first five weeks were playoff games, then I right. think McCaffrey would be out there. Right. But he probably would have you know potentially busted his Achilles. So they're just being very precautionary here. Um, no, I wouldn't go out and trade for another running back right now. If, if we learned anything from Kyle Shanahan and his, his offensive schemes, he doesn't need to go get a running back. And I think that the playing time for Jordan Mason and Isaac Rendo only helps them going forward once they get McCaffrey. So, no, I think the last thing they need to do is go out and trade for a running back. Do they rush McCaffrey back before the deadline November 5th? Just to see what they what they have with McCaffrey. No, I think I think he'll come back around that time. Okay. Um, and I think they're comfortable right now with what they have running wise. I mean, I mean, they'd have to they'd have to come back. He'd have to come back before the Cowboy game, right? Because they have yeah, because the bye week going into that final. I believe, yeah, I believe that's the way the time line, lines up. Yeah, no, I they don't, they don't need to rush him back. He's not going to play in this game against the Chiefs, which could be big. Um, yeah. he's not going to play against the Cowboys, so the bye week, and then maybe comes back against Tampa. So no, I don't think they need to rush anything. I think that the timeline's been good for the most part right now. The only thing that, you know, if it gets past the bye week and he's not ready to go, then that's when you wonder, okay, is it just going to be a, you know, put him in glass bubble wrap, uh, you know, season for Christian McCaffrey? Yeah, I mean, they they, don't, they, they just give him all that money. So, I mean, you you want to com- protect your investment as well. Of course. Of so, course. yeah, 100%. Um, going back to the Seahawks game and just the overall – um thought process of the 49ers in the red zone you know george kittle is that dude right i mean we had cynthia freeland on uh yesterday on papa and Lund and and uh at the beginning of the year when we had all the contract situation with brendan Ayuk, i forgot that she said this but um but you know everyone was kind of factoring in okay who's going to be that that go-to guy for the 49ers if Ayuk isn't ready to go week one um you know people would maybe say Debo Samuel or a lot of people were talking about Ricky Pearsall before everything uh, went down with him and and just to figure out and obviously Christian McCaffrey at that point uh, he was supposed to be there and ready to go and the heavy workload going into the season but uh, George Kittle I mean has taken that and and ran with that and has been a focal point for the offense in the in the passing game especially in the red zone um, who I mean they have to have somebody else step up, right? I mean, is is that is that going to be a Ricky Pearsall when he comes back? I mean, we kind of know what we have with Debo Samuel, and I, I mean, he had that nice catch in the in the end zone and all that kind of stuff. But he's we, we know he's not a threat in the end zone receiving receiving. If they if they get him back there in the in the in the backfield and you know do a do a sweep to the left or sweep to the right, I mean, that's where he gets he gets more. Um, more dynamic, but you yeah. know, he, he's not, he's not a guy in the passing game. So I guess in the passing game more so who, who needs to step up for the 49ers to have more uh, frequency in and success in the red zone. I would say Brandon Ayuk. I mean, he's the guy you're paying $30 million to. So Jesus, I he, forgot about Brandon Ayuk being on the team. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he should be that guy, but yeah. I mean, honestly, the guy that should be your go-to guy in the red zone should be Jawan Jennings. He's got yeah. a bigger body, and he could get yep. contested balls a little bit better. Well, I don't understand. Jump, the, he doesn't jump good, though. He doesn't have a good vertical. He has a big body, though. He's yeah, a big I body. mean, you know, yeah, I, 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 he could get separation. I mean, maybe he doesn't, you know, excel in jumping, but he, he, he should. Yeah. Um, I think, and I, I understand the one play call that was like a jump ball to, uh, to Debo Samuel in the red zone. I understand because, yeah, I, I do think you could get more touchdowns out of Debo if you're doing more jet sweeps and have right. him play running back. Right. But no, it should be Juwan Jennings and it should be Brandon Ayuk. And I'll say this too. I don't think Ricky Pearsall is going to be a touchdown machine. Mm-hmm. But if we're transitioning real quick to the Chiefs matchup, yeah. I think that the biggest thing we've heard from the Super Bowl matchup and then we saw was that Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk were not getting separation from those Chiefs corners. Mm-hmm. Now, Legereus Sneed's not there anymore. He's in Tennessee, but they still have young corners in uh, Trent McDuffie and Jalen Watson. So they got mm-hmm. young guys, um, and they played fairly well so far this season. And if it's going to be another issue again for Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel to get off man coverage, then that's where you go to Ricky Pearsall. That's basically the reason why they drafted this guy was because in the Super Bowl, their receivers could not get separation. And Kyle Shanahan wanted a Cooper Cup type of guy that could just go out there and get you a first down. 
basically be a 115 catch type of wide receiver. It's going to be a lot to ask Ricky Pearsall to have a factor in his first game ever, especially coming off of a, you know, a gunshot wound. Right. Um, but I think he could be, you know, the thing is in this matchup with the chiefs, the Niners are basically running out the same offense with the exception of not having Christian McCaffrey. But I don't right. think like Jordan Mason is anything that the Chiefs have never seen before. They've seen tough running backs before. Now, we don't even know if Jordan Mason is going to play in this game because he still has a, the shoulder injury. So we'll know mm -hmm. about that closer to maybe Friday or game time. But the one thing that the, the Chiefs haven't seen yet is Ricky Parasol. No one's seen him yet. So mm -hmm. that could be a factor in this game. On the other side, I would say... The Niners have never seen Xavier Worthy before for the Chiefs. The Chiefs have beaten the Niners with, you know, Tyree Kill, the first Super Bowl. But last year, it was the likes of Juju Smith-Schuster. Or actually, Juju Smith-Schuster wasn't there. Um, mm -hmm. It was two years ago in a regular season game that Juju Smith-Schuster ate them alive. So he yep. will be there for this game. But for the Super Bowl, it was Marquez Valdez-Scantling. It was Travis Kelsey, obviously. But I don't know how... Trevarius Ward, if he plays, is going to do against Xavier Worthy because he had trouble against um, Tutu Atwell, another kind of similar wide receiver, speedy wide yep. receiver with the Rams. So he just I don't ran, know. Right, right, ran right past him. Exactly. And, 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 and the Niners had issues against Tyler Lockett on one play last week. So yep. I do yep. wonder how they're going to fare in pass coverage against the, the speed of Xavier Worthy. Yeah, that's that's definitely the big matchup to to look to now that we look forward to the Super Bowl rematch. Um, you know, you look at again, we 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 start talking about the secondary and I've I mentioned at the beginning of the year that I thought that the secondary would have their their issues because of their youth, right? Uh but last week we saw glimpses of Malik Mustafa and and uh, uh Renardo Green and and they actually show show promise, right? But now you have a Hall of Fame quarterback coming in. You, you have Patrick Mahomes coming in with uh, with Andy Reid. They know you know they're going to attack uh, that secondary. So it's going to be a really really big test for the 49ers going into this one. Uh, you know you're you know they're going to want to get this this game. I mean you know you talk about must wins and and a chip on your shoulder and and oh, we're treating it like any other game. You know there's a little bit to it that they they want to get even hearing Fred Warner on the morning show this week they they want to get to Mahomes they they want to be able to say that they can beat him because they just haven't done that and and they haven't beat the Chiefs since 2014 man that's a, that's, a, that's a long time that's a long time yeah no it has I think that it's interesting yesterday because we uh, Steve Young came on with Tolbert and Copes mm -hmm. and he kind of related the bugaboo of the Niners with the Chiefs to the 90s Cowboys. Mm, and yeah. I, I, I'm, I'll ask you, Walter, since you're a Niner fan, is, are mm -hmm. they up there now? Like, as Are they the most hated team to you? Hatred? As far as, as, far as a Niner fan base? I would say, okay, I inherited the hatred of the Cowboys, mm -hmm. right? I inherited that. I didn't yeah. live it. I'm living the hatred of of the chiefs. Yes. So I would definitely say, I mean, obviously recency bias, but uh, you know, the Cowboys, I mean, what have the Cowboys done? The, the Cowboys haven't done anything in my lifetime. You it's know, it's just they, a they, classic they, rivalry. It, it, it's a classic rivalry. Just like, just like with, with giants and Dodgers, you, yes. you respect the classic rivalries. You respect that. And I, I love the Cowboy and, and 49er rivalry. It's, it's great. I mean, it's, it's incredible, but again, I didn't live that. And of the playoff matchups that the 49ers have had, they have dominated Dallas. I mean, it's, it's, it hasn't really been a rivalry in my eyes. Um, and I, I think that, I don't know if that's just because of the recency bias, but again, I have not seen a Super Bowl. I have not seen my 49er team win and come out on top. And it is directly because of the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. That's why for me, there it's 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 the cowboys you respect it but the chiefs are on another level of of hatred for me and, no, and, I, and i think it it if you ask like generations of 49er fans it depends on what generation you you classify into i think a lot of people in my generation could, would probably give you the, the the same answer 
Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of rivalries from the AFC that the Niners have. I think the only one really would be the Raiders because of the cross-town Geograph- rivalry. Yeah, geographically. Yeah, geographically. Yeah. But I would say, I mean, during the 80s run, the Niners dominated everybody, so there was no like Super Bowl matchup. Like they, they beat the Bengals twice, but no, like the Bengals would hate the Niners, but it wasn't like right. it wasn't like that. Um, yeah. This is different, I, I, I believe. Like, yeah, I, I think that you grew up, you grow up if you're a Niner fan hating the Cowboys, mm-hmm. but there hasn't been anything recently to ignite that rivalry. Now there was, you know, two playoff games, but I, I don't, I, it's not the same as Patrick Mahomes taking, you know, the life out of you, stealing your heart out. Right, you know, with when having not, a ten point lead in two Super Bowls, not twice. once either, twice. Twice, I know. Twice, I know. And he's four and zero against Kyle Shanahan and the Niners. Um, I kind of related to. There was no just, just just talking about it now. I, I know, <laughs> um, but I, I kind of related to. Uh, there was no Warriors Cavaliers rivalry, and then that developed after facing them four times in the right. NBA Finals. Right. So, that was more that was more so with with LeBron too. Yes. I mean, well that okay, yeah. so like so would you say now Mahomes is on LeBron level hatred for the Bay Area? Uh whew. for the I I would I would say ah, God. I I I wouldn't go there yet because the, the LeBron stuff was fueled by obviously Draymond and that whole thing, um him getting suspended for the for the NBA it's finals. A, it's a different level. It's a different level. Well, yeah, because uh, because and because and Mahomes. Yeah, because with basketball, you you play a lot more. So we right. saw LeBron as Warriors fans. We saw him twice a year in the regular season, and he always, you know, now he's with the Lakers. You see him, you know, all the time. But the but, Warriors um, beat LeBron. That's that's the that's the thing. The Warriors beat LeBron repeatedly. Yes. The one time that he did come out on top, the the three one uh, comeback. That was what what year was that? Was that uh eighteen twenty no, that was twenty uh sixteen. Twenty twenty sixteen. Was it twenty oh twenty twenty sixteen year Bas- basketball is weird because of the freaking calendars, man. It was the twenty sixteen finals between the Cavaliers and Warriors where the Cavs or the Warriors had the three one lead. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um but but yeah, so I mean they, they beat LeBron. Yeah. They beat LeBron. They haven't done that with Mahomes. So yeah. uh no, so, I know, and, I don't know, and, man, and like, this in, in this scenario, yeah, Patrick Mahomes is Steph Curry. Oh, geez. He's, he, he's not going to hit us with a night-night, is he? No, probably not. At Levi's? Come on. Nah. That would piss me off. That would be who, a hell of a celebration, though. That's something that we were talking about uh, yesterday on Papa and Lund. Who's hated more, like, nationally? Uh, I mean, because we love Steph, right? And Patrick Mahomes is loved by Chiefs fans, but who who hurts you the most, like, of, of, of opposing fan bases? Steph Curry... Or uh, or Patrick Mahomes, because they all kind they both kind of have that killer that killer yeah. mentality, and they just su- like you like you said earlier, they just suck the life out of you. I think it's uh, similar. I would I would I say Mahomes. Yeah, yeah. I would I would I would say Mahomes and Steph are probably on the same level as hatred around their respected sport. Yeah, and so yeah. from 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 fan bases, they have the respect of right. their their right. peers. But yeah, no, that's 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 interesting. I mean. Yeah, man, I think this is a very interesting matchup. And, um, you know, Kyle's been asked about it. He was asked about it bluntly from Tim Kawakami yesterday where he was like, uh, you know, you haven't beat this team. Do you think about that for yourself? You know, then you haven't beat the Chiefs. And he goes, well, yeah, of course. You know, anytime you lose to a team twice in the Super Bowl and I'm 0-4 against them. And, you know, he talked about, do you go watch last year's Super Bowl or do you watch the five games that, you know, happened this year for the Chiefs? And he goes, both. But um, yeah, for the Niners, I mean, I think this is they have a lot to prove. It's not a must win. Um, if they come out of this game and they are three and four, it's not the end of the world. But also if they win this game, it releases some, you know, demons, I would say. Um, I think that it would it would make you feel better about yourself. Like I think the reaction would be huge win for the Niners to beat the Chiefs. Do you feel better about the team now? They're four and three. They, you know, beat the team that they never could beat before, but it's not going to give you back the Super Bowls. That's yep. basically what Steve Young told Tolbert and Copes yesterday too, was yep. it's not going to, you know, just, just because we beat the Cowboys in the regular season in 1994, it doesn't mean that we thought, okay, now we're going to, you know, 
go win the Super Bowl again. Like, you know, you, you still got to do it. You still got to go and beat the Cowboys in the NFC Championship again. And I don't know if it's going to be a Niners uh, Chiefs Super Bowl again. I, we're, we're way far from that again. But right. I just think that it would do a lot more for the Niners and the Chiefs. Chiefs, okay, they start 5-1. and one, No big deal. They lose to the team that they beat in the Super Bowl. That's good. You know, that that's 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 good revenge for the Niners. But it would mean like Kyle Shanahan finally beat um, Andy Reid. Uh, you know, that that would go a long way because I think that's the biggest thing that we you know. There's a lot of indictments on Kyle, but one of the big ones is he can't beat Andy Reid. And Andy Reid was that guy for the longest time where yeah. he couldn't win the NFC Championship game. He couldn't win Super Bowls. And now that's totally flipped. But now he has this, you know, maybe it's more Mahomes and Andy Reid. Don't, don't really know as far as who, you know, perpetually kicks the Niners' ass. Like, I always thought in the two Super Bowls, the Niners were the better team. But Mahomes is just that much of a difference maker that he, you know, led them to victories. So, I don't know. I think, and I think going into this game on Sunday, it's kind of even. I think that both teams on paper, I don't really know who, I don't know who to get the edge to. But uh, as far as, like, just looking at, you know, the roster on paper. But when you have Mahomes, yeah, you always kind of give a slight edge to him because he's, you know, this generation's Brady, Joe Montana, whatever you want to call him. Which, by the way, did you happen to see the uh, the updated PFF rankings, quarterbacks? Oh, I look every week. See who's number one? No, I haven't looked, actually. Brock Purdy! He's number one in PFF? He's number one. All right. Everyone's losing their minds. Where's Jordan Love? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know that much. I didn't look at it that much. I got that wrong. <laughs> You're stupid. No, Brock, uh, Brock, Brock is playing the best football of his career. I, I, I know I know. last year, statistically, he was amazing and was in MVP discussions. Yeah. He looks, he looks, it's, it's weird. Like, it's not so much the stats. It's just how you look when you play. Yep. And without having McCaffrey and finding other guys and being comfortable. He's not wilting. He, he's no. uh, he's thriving under the pressure, and, and he and he's looks moving confident. and grooving. He's moving he and grooving. Yeah, just like this podcast, we are moving and grooving. Really quick, uh, put a bow on this. Uh, hell yeah, dude. Uh, I'm grooving, baby. <laughs> that, that's Groove. Your, that's, your, that's your toilet dance right there. What you just showed me. I never dance when I'm on the toilet, Walter. <laughs> serious that's not, business. That's, that's serious business, man. You got to exercise those demons. Um, <laughs> what was it? Um. Uh, We'll put a bow on this conversation. 49ers Chiefs Super Bowl, Super Bowl rematch. Um, if they win, I'd be able to sleep at night, but I will still have nightmares of the Super Bowl. That's that's just that's that's my my thought process. I All mean, right. you'll feel you'll feel good going into Monday morning. It'll feel great, but you know, two years down the line, I'll still have a nightmare of of Patrick Mahomes and the coin flip and and everything. I I still have those uh in the back of my mind so it's not gonna again it's not gonna change what has happened in the in the past but uh let's go ahead and switch gears man let's go through this and get into the gridiron gab because we have trades we have trades that are happening wide receivers mm -hmm. off the market um and i guess <laughs> at one point or another they were both uh former former Raiders. So I know yeah. you love this, this conversation with Devonte Adams. You called it by the way, uh, you called it last podcast. You did say you thought that Devonte, you, you backtracked a little bit. You pulled the, you pulled the Greg Papa. You were like, ah, no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't I know never backtrack. Well, did I never backtrack? <laughs> but, uh, but you did say that you thought that Devonte was going to play in that Monday night game. It didn't happen, but he yeah. got traded for, uh, earlier this week and he will be, I think he's already in, in uh, New York. Yep. So he's going to be playing this weekend, right? So Devontae Adams is with the Jets and Amari Cooper got traded to uh, to the Bills. Really quick, before we dissect each one of them, who do you think has the biggest impact on their respective team? Oh, who, Amari Cooper. Who's the who's the biggest game changer for their respective teams? Amari Cooper. Without, without, think, a, question. I, without, without, a, without a doubt, I think that Amari Cooper now is the number one guy for the Buffalo Bills. He's younger. I know, uh, I mean, the the day that this trade went down, I walk in the studio and I'm like, I think this is a bigger deal for the Bills than the, the, the Jets trade. 
And my yeah. dad goes, I don't know if Amari can play anymore. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think he was motivated to play with the Browns. I think before the season, there was a connection yeah. with the 49ers. He was in trade talks to replace Brandon Ayuk. If Brandon Ayuk yes. would go to Cleveland. Yep. And I think we're starting we to see. We stimulated it on a, on a, on the off air pod. Remember? Yes. We, we, yes. We did that for the, with the Madden game. I beat, exactly. I beat horribly, yeah. We thought that was going to happen, and I think we're yeah. starting to see why no one wanted to play with Deshaun Watson, whether you're Brandon Ayuk or um, uh, Amari Cooper. Yeah, but um, yeah, he was part of train discussions, and he released a you know, but post on Twitter or whatever or Instagram saying like, I wouldn't mind in relation to being traded from the the big Cleveland Browns, and he you know stuck it out and played for them this season. Mm. But um, now you know with them being one and five, he goes to a better situation with the Buffalo Bills. And yeah, I thought the Bills' offense was good, even without a number one wide receiver. That the scheme was pretty good. They were, you know, finding ways to get the ball to James Cook, and I think they used their tight ends enough with mm-hmm. the combination they have there with uh, Dawson Knox and Dalton Kincaid. But you know, they were getting it done with Matt Collins and uh, Keon Coleman, other guys they found. But now they have a true number one guy, and I, I like their wide receiver depth for the Buffalo Bills. So I think he'll, I think he will make a big impact. As far as Devontae Adams going to the Jets, I mean, it sounds sexy. Um, I just think I, – I don't know how it's going to work. Uh, I think there's so many issues with that Jets offense right now. I think that primarily it's the lack of running game and the uh, pass protection. That's the biggest issue. Mm-hmm. But I think that the big deal is that Rodgers wanted someone he's comfortable with, and he's comfortable with Alan Lazard, and Garrett Wilson's a very good wide receiver. Um What's he, Randall Cobb doing these days? Where, where's he at? Randall Cobb just, retired, went to the SEC the gang Network. Back together. Yeah. What's Greg I, Jennings doing? <laughs> yeah. Gre- he hates Greg Jennings. I remember they had like a falling out years ago. Did, did he, does he really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because oh, wow. Greg Jennings called him out uh, after Donald he. Donald Driver. What, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Donald Driver. Where's, uh, where's uh, Jordy Nelson? All of oh, all, dude. Jordy. All, all he, his favorite he's guys. He's not playing anymore, is he? No, no. He's, he's done. Retired. He's done. Yeah. He, was, he was done when he went to the Raiders. Didn't he end up uh, with the Titans after that, though? Jordy Nelson? Yeah, wasn't, wasn't he playing well? You're thinking of another white receiver named Eric Decker. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah another, another another white guy. They, yes. they, 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 they all look the same to me. Jesus, uh, Walter. <laughs> all right. Forget Walter's racism there. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think that, I mean, I, I think the offense will be better. I thought they, they slightly improved against the Bills on Monday Night Football. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers just has a big issue with Mike Williams, it looks like. And it's not so much that Mike Williams can't play anymore. I think it's just that he doesn't he can't follow what he wants him to do. Rodgers is very demanding in the same way that Brady's demanding when it comes to, you know, playing quarterback and what I expect from the receivers. So and I don't I, you know, people are saying like Rodgers threw Williams under the bus. I think he was just holding him accountable. And you could question like the whole like when he was explaining how Mike Williams needs to go to the red line when it comes to a go route, he didn't he didn't go to the red line. Some people are saying, like, we shouldn't Rodgers adjust to him. I'm like, nah, not really. That's He's the quarterback. That's kind of how it goes. So right. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if Mike Williams is cut in the next couple of days here because I don't think anybody would trade for him right now. Right. Um, so, yeah, I I would say Amari Cooper's going to have the bigger impact on the Bills, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Jets are a better football team. Hell, we can talk but about this. It... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, if, they, if Hassan Reddick finally wises up in place for them, then they 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 can you know you, you basically you're getting two players in yep. Devonte Adams and Hassan Reddick. Yep. I laughed last week when I saw that his agency severed ties with him. That's how you know the man is batshit crazy because <laughs> his own agency is like get your ass to work, and he's like, <laughs> like no, I need a millions on the table. We don't want any anything associated with this guy. Yeah, uh, he's. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically like at a Jerry Maguire where he sees he's telling Cuba Gooding Jr. Help me help yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's incredible, man. Uh, really quick before we get into a little bit more uh, NFL talk and, and kind of going into into trade rumor season uh, because we had a couple of dominoes fall. Are there more guys that are going to come off of those teams? I'll get to your thoughts on that in a second. But with Devontae Adams uh, getting two play with his guy. I mean, we know that, that that's what he wanted all, all along. I mean, he went and, and left and played with Derek Carr when that wasn't a, a possibility. He went back to his ex and he's back with with uh, Aaron Rodgers. It's just a cycle cycle of love, baby. Um, but mm. when you look to the Jets with that move, does that make them 
a playoff team because right now they're two and four. They they've already fired their head coach. Uh, they're they're it's it's kind of just burning in New York right now with, with everything that's going on. But do you think that this makes them a, a more serious playoff contender? I know that there's other there's other factors that come into that. Obviously, Hassan Reddick coming into the fold that would change things. But just on the service alone with that offense and how it's gone and how it can potentially go with Devontae Adams coming in. Does that, does that change their projection going into the, the rest of the season? I mean, it's playoff or buzz for everybody's jobs. Yeah. Um, I'll say yes. I have to see it to believe it. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if they did make the playoffs. Um, I just know how much of a factor they'll be in the playoffs. I never seen a team be like so one aggressive. And done, probably, yeah, one and done. Maybe I, I've never seen a team be so aggressive while while simultaneously making so many so many changes. Like yeah. this kind of reminds me of the 2021 Rams. Yeah. They made big moves that off season to go get Matthew Stafford, and then in season they trade for Von Miller and they sign Odell Beckham. Mm-hmm. The Jets are basically doing the same thing. They, you know, one after big names this offseason, two off seasons ago getting Aaron Rodgers, and then trading for Devontae Adams at the deadline, while simultaneously firing their coach and changing offensive coordinators. It just seems like a lot of change. I think yeah. it's all positive changes. Love Robert Sala. Thought he got a raw deal, but watching Jeff Ulbrich in his press conferences, he commands a room a little better than Robert Sala. I'll mm-hmm. admit that. He seems more like a leader of men. Not to say that Robert Sala wasn't a leader of men. He just, after games like losing to the Broncos and the media, like not to say like you got to answer to the media, but, you know, New York's a very demanding fan base and demanding media market. And I thought Robert Sala, when asked, like, what do you need to do against the Broncos or what what, what, what led to the loss against the Broncos? And he was like, well, you know, we just, you know, um, um, we, we didn't make plays. And it's after a while, it's like, I think that Rodgers got tired of him. I'm not saying that he directly fired, you know, got him fired, but. Um, I think they're in a better position with Jeff Ulbrich. Uh, they look better offensively. The win screwed them with the two kicks. They probably would have won that game against the Bills. Um, yeah, I. It's not going to look great, but I think the I think the Jets probably do make the playoffs. Maybe like with a ten and seven record or nine and eight or something like that. Okay, they get in as a wild card team. They're yeah, I I, 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 the, I think the it's the Bills division. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Uh, okay, let's wrap up the gab really quick just because we were talking about a lot of trades and with Devontae getting traded and 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 Amari Cooper getting traded. You just look at those teams. Is is there going to be a, a full fire sale? Is there going to be more guys being removed from those teams? I know that Max Crosby is there. Yeah. Is he going to be sticking around? Uh, you look at what happened with Aiden Hutchinson. Yep. That seems like a perfect fit for for a trade partner. Um, just your thoughts on that, but then also looking at the at the Cleveland Browns. I mean, we know that they're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place with the Devon- or not Devonte uh, with a uh, with Deshaun, Deshaun Watson, Watson. Yeah. at quarterback. Um, is there any possibility that they move on from any of their key pieces to to kind of to kind of re? Because I don't I don't know what the Browns can can do. I mean, they're just kind of stuck in like purgatory right now, where they're they just they they can't get better. And they're just getting worse. I mean, it's just it's it's a weird dynamic for the Browns. But uh, looking at those two teams in, in 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 particular, I mean, do you think anybody else comes off of those rosters? Well, first and foremost, let me start with the Raiders. Um, of course. I mean, I I feel like this is another rebuild. Like like the Raiders have gone through three re- rebuilds in the last like eight years here. With you know from going from you know, Jack Del Rio to John Gruden, John Gruden to Josh McDaniels, now Josh McDaniels to Antonio Pierce. Mm. And the Devontae Adams move, I get it. It had to be done. But it's also disappointing because that guy came to play with Derek Carr, but also he really wanted to be a Raider. Like, it was the first time in a while that I saw somebody. Yeah, it was his team. He grew up, you know, wanting to be, you know, a Raider. Um, Grew up with uh, Tim Brown being, you know, his idol. And it sucks. Like, I remember when the move went down, I was like, well, this won't, this won't go down like Antonio Brown and Randy Moss. And it did. Um, not to that came, severity, not to that severity, but no, not, not, not to that severity, but the Raiders yeah. screwed them. They, they didn't go out and get a quarterback uh, after, yeah. after they, after <laughs> they released Derek Carr. Here's they, Jimmy. 
Yeah. The, yeah. They, they never upgraded the quarterback position. They wanted Tom Brady. They wanted Tom Brady to play quarterback for them. And now he's a minority owner. You hear, um, you hear the comments, by the way. I mean, you were going through all those head coaches. Uh, did, did you hear the, I think it was a rumor that was put out there. I forget who put it out there. So maybe, Belichick. Maybe, yeah. Belichick. I have a hard time believing that Belichick would want to join the Raiders. Um, it would be the same, you know, philosophy of, as Josh McDaniels. Yeah. Um, I think Josh McDaniels coming to the Raiders was a big deal of why Tom Brady is minority owner, but I, you know, eventually Mark Davis had to make a move there. Um, and it sounds like Tom Brady's going to basically be, I mean, I don't know how this is going to work out, but he's basically going to be like kind of a Buster Posey type for them yeah. where he's going to run their football operations to a point where he's going to, you know, whatever quarterbacks are available in the draft, he's going to meet with them. And if I was Fox, I'd be like, dude, do you focused on the Raiders? You focused on TV, um, right? Right. Like, like, like this whole week, all the, all the things that he can't do, like as a minority yeah. owner well, now, like, he'll, how's spend, it gonna be he'll spend more time in the Raiders facility this week than he will with either the Chiefs or the 49ers. That's wild. And he's got he's got to call their game on Sunday. Um, as far as what they do going forward, um, I know Raider fans are not happy that I said this on another podcast. Mm -hmm. I hated the Khalil Mack trade. Um, I didn't understand it. However, Damn. in order to secure a quarterback in the draft next year, if the Lions offered two first-round picks for Max Crosby, I would make that move. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Damn. I know that. I know that pains you to. No, not really, see. Walter. Because <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Everyone points me as it, it paints me as the Raider guy. Yeah. My my Raider love significantly died. Uh, I left my heart in Oakland. Yeah, once they left and they become this Las Vegas thing. Yeah, I still I bleed. I, I still bleed a little silver and black. Max Crosby was never my guy. Khalil Mack right. was my guy, but Khalil I Mack, yeah. I appreciate Max Crosby as a player, but he's not my guy. There's a yeah. lot of guys on this team now where I'm like, eh, I have no attachment to them. <laughs> as far as the Cleveland Browns, don't tell Waterboy that he, he like lost his mind on air. Uh, I'll, tell him, I'll tell him. I'll tell him. It's different for me though. Like you know, it's, yeah. it's easy to get rid of Max Crosby. It's yeah. it's, it's not easy because Jesus, he's a, well, Jesus. You no, know, no. But like as far as like a fan, like for me, like Khalil yeah. Mack was like shit. All right, th this is my guy now. Yeah. Max Crosby at that point in 2019, I you know my my love for the Raiders basically you know was on life support. Um. You know, I, I still, you know, get excited every now and then, but it's not, it's not the same. I, I used to, I used to live and die with the, every Raider game, and now I don't. Um, as far as the Browns, there's no way in hell they're trading Miles Garrett. I would never even, I have never even entertained that idea. He's just a generational pass, pass, pass rusher, reigning mm -hmm. defensive player of the year. You don't move on from him. Who you could move on from if you're the Lions to get is Zadarius Smith, the other pass rusher there. Ooh. I would not be surprised there. Hassan Reddick, I don't think he's going to get moved at all. There's yeah. rumors about him going to the Lions. It sucks because the stipulation in the trade from the Jets, uh, for the Eagles to the Jets, is if the uh, Jets ended up trading Hassan Reddick again to an mm -hmm. NFC team, that third round pick they traded for would come a, become a second round pick. So that's going to limit the options. Mm. And I think other teams are going to be like, why would I trust Hassan Reddick right now? He seems crazy. So, and you, and you got to pay him too. That's the whole thing. Yeah. So I don't think anyone trades for Hassan Reddick. I think he stays on the Jets. I wouldn't be surprised if Sidarius Smith becomes the guy that the Lions go get. Mm. This will be very interesting. I, dude, I, I love I love trade talk. It's going to start heating up uh, in, in a couple of weeks. Obviously, mm -hmm. the trade deadline, November 5th. Uh, so we'll definitely get into that. And conveniently enough, it lines up with the 49ers by week. So we will spend an entire practice squad just breaking down all of these trade rumors. The biggest thing to happen on November 5th. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, let's uh, let's end the Gridiron Gab and let's get into the produce producer pickums for week seven. Let's, let's pick get into it, Derek. Uh, as I mentioned, you went three and four uh, a, a horrible that was that was by far your worst actually no, no week, bueno. week two week two was bad for you You went three and five but you went three and four so similarly um in in week six and i went five and two that is my back-to-back -back winning records uh winning weeks if you will 
Um, and now our overall record, you are 27 and 19. Good for you not for not picking any pushes. That is uh, that is impressive uh, so far. I have two of them. But uh, you are hey, 27 and, and 19, and I have caught up to you, my friend. I am 25, 18, and 2. So okay. literally a two-game a two game, a two game separation there. So let's make the punishment an accumulative thing here because okay. this is tight and sexy. It's, it's getting juicy. Oh, tight and sexy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You talking about me, or you talking about the the picks? I'm talking about our. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I always got to make it weird, Derek. I'm sorry. You do. I mean, you <laughs> could just let me say sexy and move on. It wasn't sexual in nature. <laughs> All right, man. Well, let's go ahead and get it. <laughs> My God, let's go ahead. We have we have way too much fun uh, on this on this podcast. Uh, all right, let's get into. I'm glad we the, do. I don't, I don't know if the listeners do. No, oh, the, the listeners <laughs> love it. The listeners love it. Otis right. right now is listening to this, and he is cracking cracking up uh, with laughter. There you go. Yeah, he's listening to it. We, we, we got to get back to doing. What do we, a, what do we a call live? our fan base? The the practice squad themselves. Like, yeah, they're, they're, if, we, if we're, we're the are, practice squad, are, then, who, are, then, 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 then what are our listeners called? Scouts? I don't. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> they're they're, uh, they're just you know we're just a collective group of of practice squatters. Squatters. The, the, squ the, squatters. the squatters. I like it. I like it. There you go. Squatters. The squatters. Uh, multiple meanings. Uh, all right, let's get into the <laughs> the week seven picks. Let's do and it. And you, I started last Thursday, so you start this Thursday. Yeah. Uh, it's not a great matchup, but let's go with the Denver Broncos going to New Orleans. Whoa, this is a fantastic matchup, Walter. Is it? Is it? Yeah, the Sean Payton revenge game. All right. I mean, yeah, if you want to look at that, if you want to look at it, does he get a standing ovation? Does he get a yeah? A nice, he won, he, a nice yeah, he, he, yeah, he he changed that whole franchise. Yeah, is there absolutely. a is there a pregame uh, absolutely. video? Absolutely. Halftime, you know, giving yep. him a jacket or something. Give him a beignet. Give him a baby cake. Give him the whole thing. <laughs> give him a hurricane. Yeah, just get. Just yeah, get there you go. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Uh, the Broncos, the 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 Sean Payton Bowl, if yes. you will. The Broncos and the Saints opened up with the Saints giving three and a half. It is now consensus Broncos giving two and a half. Yeah, I think I have to go with the Broncos here because the Saints are significantly banged up. They do not have Derek Carr. They don't have Chris Olave. They don't have Rashid Shahid. I don't know what they're going to do offensively. Yeah, go with the Broncos here. Rashid Shahid, by the way, is that is that the best name in football? I like Puka Nakua, but yeah, Rashid Shahid's right up there. I missed Van Ginkle on the on the bye oh, week. And, Andrew Van Ginkle. Yeah, that, that's a that's a great name. Also, oh, fantastic. We have what to about, rank. Uh, our, what about our our a, the, the, speaking of the Saints? There's a new guy, uh, like like Bub Means. Bug Means. Bub Means. Bub. What about I Jake think, Butt? You remember Jake Butt? Of course. I never, I never forget a good butt. Dude, that was a good, that was a good one. Uh, Tank, what's his Tank? Uh, Tank what's, Bigsby. What's Tank Bigsby for the Jags, right? He's on yes. The Jags. Yeah, dude. We we got to go through like our 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 top names in the NFL. Just uh, even even if they're not good, we just gotta. We'll gotta do that go. on the bye week. We'll do. That you ever do week. that in Madden? You draft uh, by by their names alone. Like you have no scouting report on them at all. You just no. draft by their name. No, Walter. I have a life. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. All right. So you went. Uh, who would you go with? You went with the. I went, went with the Broncos. Broncos. I went okay, with the Broncos. Sorry, sorry, we got off on a tangent. No, All right, let's good. go through. Let's go through. Uh, we're getting to going back to going back to London, mate. Um, that's my. Uh, I had to edit that out. Uh, okay, let's go to London. Jaguars are the home team this week. They are taking on the Patriots. A good old uh, Patriots going to London. That that has to be fantastic. Um. It is the Jacksonville Jaguars opened up with the Jags giving six. It's now five and a half. Jags were there last week. They have an advantage. The Patriots suck, but the Jaguars do too. I don't know who the hell to take. Um, yeah, I just go with the Jaguars. All right. That's not yeah, good. I think I think I think you have to because yeah, they're they yeah, should. Do you, do you do you go with the more shitty team that is getting points though? I mean, you're getting five and a half points. Well, who, who's the more shitty team? The Patriots. Yeah. No, <laughs> I would. I would go now. Nah, the the, the Jag a terrible game. No, the at all costs. <laughs> well, there's a reason why it's at six thirty for us. Um, <laughs> I will not be getting up at six thirty to watch that game. I'll catch it in the third quarter. I sadly will because I don't have a life. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you have to go with the Jags here. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll go with the Jags, man. Th thank you for uh, for confirming my pick. Yeah. 
you're, you're the last person I want to take advice from. Wow. Sorry. No. I respect you, Derek. All right, let's go to uh, the 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 <laughs> the bird bowl here. We got a bird bowl. Uh, the Seahawks taking on the Falcons in Atlanta. Uh, a couple of birds open up with Falcons giving three and a half. It is now Falcons giving three. Yeah, lay the points with the Falcons here. Um, I think the Falcons have found their groove offensively. They beat up on the Panthers last week. Uh, not a very good team, but I think they're figuring things out. They got the passing game going and the running game going with Bijan and Tyler Tyler Algier. Mm. Give me the Falcons. Yeah, their playmakers are starting to show up now. So it's bird. Gonna be really, really bird. bird. Squawking. <laughs> gonna be interesting to see what the Falcons uh can turn into as the season goes on. Uh the next matchup is in Buffalo. It is the Titans taking on the Buffalo Bills. Started with the Bills giving six and a half. It is now at nine and a half. Ooh. Ah, oh, God. I hate I hate the two-score thing in the NFL. It's very difficult. The last time I did that was last week. Uh, I took the Eagles nine. Mm-hmm. Didn't work out. They, they Jesus, that was, that was a terrible game for the. And the Bills are on a short Eagles. week. And the Bills are on a short week. Um, but it's the Titans. I mean, Will Levis sucks. Who, who, who's, who's their? Are, are they still going with uh, Will Levis? Yes, mayonnaise. Will Levis. Oh, geez. All right. Uh, I'll go with the Bills, man. I, I, I'll, right. I'll take. I'll take the points on that. Uh, nine and a half. I don't feel confident about these first two picks. I, I, I will be one hundred percent transparent. Uh, let's go to a battle in the AFC North. Cincinnati Bengals at Cleveland Browns. It started with the Bengals giving uh. one. It is now the Bengals giving five and a half. Love to see you squirm. <laughs> that's, a, that's an ugly match. I don't know. I mean, the Bengals are, are the better. The Bengals? the Bengals are the better team. <laughs> yeah. But the Browns, I mean, yeah. eventually the Browns got to wake up here. Jesus. Um, and the Browns have success against the Bengals. And Nick Chubb is coming back. Nick Chubb is coming back. And I was impressed with the Bengals at all against the the Giants. You know what? And they just trade away Amari Cooper, but for whatever reason, and Jerry <laughs> G- Jerry Judy may have a big breakout game. Hell, give me the Browns. I'll Ooh. go with I'll go with the Browns here. <laughs> Damn! All right, you're going with the Browns, uh, getting five and a half points. We'll switch over to ooh a really good matchup. This is this is juicy. Good quarterback game here. You have you love the uh, word Walter. Juicy, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I have pants with, with Juicy on, on the ass. That's that's my... Do you really? No, I don't. All right. Well, <laughs> if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, CJ Stroud is the quarterback for the Texans, and your guy, Jordan Love, is the quarterback for the Ooh. Packers. Texans going is to Lambeau Field, a good one in the morning slate. The Packers getting or giving two and a half uh, that was what it opened at. Now it's Packers giving three. I'm gonna go with the Texans. I'm mm. gonna go with the Texans, man. I don't know about that one. Uh, yeah, 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 I'm gonna go with the Texans. All right, they look good. I, last week. I think the Packers win, and Jordan Love is, you know, he's doing his thing. He goes out there and wins, and everybody's like, you know very well who you are. Don't let them hold you down. You said it was juicy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you. Yeah, I, I need more of that in my life. Um, Packers, really quick. I saw a poll. Did somebody, a Packers somebody, poll? Yeah, Packer poll. Someone put out there really quick uh, that they have one of the better wide receiver cores. In the, Absolutely, in the, they do. Absolutely you think they have they the do. best, though? You think they have the best? Is it up they, there, like top five? Yeah, they might. They might. From top to bottom, from Christian Watson to Jaden Reed. And they're all to, young, too to Romeo Dobbs, to Dontavious Wicks. They're wow. all young and cheap. Yeah. No, yeah. I I would say, yeah, Packers do have the best receiving core in football. All right. Well, I'm still going with the Texans. Uh, eat S, Derek. Let's go to the next mm. matchup. Uh, the Dolphins against the Colts in Indianapolis. Opened up with the Dolphins giving one. It is now the Colts giving three. As long as Snoop Huntley is still the quarterback for the Dolphins, I can't really trust him. Give me the Colts. All right. You get, get the Colts. You know, I... Uh, I would prefer if the Colts started Joe Flacco over Anthony Richardson. <laughs> All right, let's go to, the, it looks like, another morning ga- uh, morning slate game battle in the 
uh, in the in the north, in the NFC North, the Lions and the Vikings. This is mm. a good one. This is a good one. Uh, Vikings still undefeated. Vikings are still undefeated. Yes, might change this week. It'll it'll be very interesting. But uh, opened up with the lion or the Lions giving three, and now with the news of Aiden Hutchinson and everything like that, uh, Vikings are giving one and a half. I think that I am going to go with the Lions. I trust the Lions more than I trust the Vikings. Hmm. Um, I don't fault you there. They're the, the more established team, but the Vikings have looked really good. I don't think you go wrong either way with this one. Have. Yeah. So you're taking, you're taking the Lions here? I'm, I'm, I'm picking the Lions just because okay. they're, getting, they're getting points too. So I always like uh, when a good team gets points. I, I like that. Okay. All right, so I'm going with the Lions on that one. The next matchup, the last game of the morning slate, battle in the East, the Eagles and the Giants in New York. A lot of stuff going on in New York these days, but uh, opening up with the Eagles giving three and a half. It is currently at the Eagles giving three. Yeah, I think the Eagles got to win this game. Um, three and a half. It was a, if it was a bigger spread, I'd probably say the Giants cover, but mm-hmm. I think three and a half is just right. Yeah, giving the Eagles to win. I think Saquon Barkley's a little naive to think he's not going to get booed when he goes back to New York. That's not going to happen. He will get booed thoroughly. Oh, 100%. Yes. Public enemy number one. Yes. He, he really thinks he's not going to get booed? He said the other day, like, he knows that they won't be happy, but he doesn't think he's going to get booed. What's he and smoking? Like, yeah, he's he he will get booed. He will, I need some of that. Yeah. I need some of that. All right. Uh, now I get the the weight off of your shoulders. I get to pick the Raiders this week. Mm. Uh, the Raider game. They uh, it's the battle for Los Angeles. <laughs> it is the Raiders against the Rams in L.A. And it opened up with the Rams giving four. It is now the Rams giving six and a half. I think the Rams are still a little bit banged up, right? They still are. But Cooper Cup may come back this week. It sounds like he will. I think I'll take the Rams on this one, even yeah. though it'll probably be a home game for the Raiders. It will be. Um, but I'll, I'll take the Rams. Six and a half, I'll take the Rams in that matchup. Uh, next game for you, less juicy, Panthers and the Commanders opened up with the Commanders getting or giving three, and it is now Commanders giving eight. So more than a touchdown. The team that lost last week that I was impressed with the most was the Commanders for not getting blown out against the Ravens. They stood tall, lost that game, but yeah, they, they held their own in that game. Um, yeah. yeah, I yeah, give, give me the Commanders. They're they're playing really good football right now. Don't have um, Jonathan Allen for the rest of the season. Tore a pick, but mm-hmm. I think offensively they're they're pretty good right now. Pretty solid. Yeah, their firepower. It, it, it's I mean we were talking about it last week when we were trying to see. You thought that uh, that. Jaden Daniels and the offense would kind of come back to reality, but they, they, did, hasn't they did hold their own. They yep. they held their own against the against the Ravens, and I missed the cover by half a point, and I and I I'm I'm happy about that. I'm happy about that. All right, they got six and a half last week, and and they lost by seven. So, um, all right, I I like the pick. Let's go to the game America's game of the week one twenty five. Uh, on Fox, it is the Chiefs, the Super Bowl matchup, Super Bowl rematch of last year. The Chiefs and the 49ers opened up with the Niners giving two. It is currently at the 49ers giving one and a half. Pains me to say, but until proven otherwise, 49ers cannot exercise the demons. They cannot exercise their boogeyman of Patrick Mahomes. Pains me to say, but Patrick Mahomes is getting points. That is something that you lay. So, yeah. so I'm, I'm going with the Chiefs getting uh, one and a half. It hurts, right. it, hurts my, it hurts my heart, but. No, you're that, being real. You're being real, that, and, I, and, I, and I respect that. I'm, gotta be you're real. being real. Got to be real. Um, all right, let's go to the Sunday night matchup. It is the Jets and the Steelers. Hmm. Jets were giving one. Now they're giving two and a half. Devontae Adams, uh he should be playing in this game, right? He'll, it'll be his yeah, debut. He's, this week. he's a full go. He's a full go. M- m- miraculous recovery from that hamstring, dude. Fun- funny how, funny how that, funny how that works. It's funny. <laughs> All right, Jets and Steelers, two and a half to the Jets currently. Well, the other caveat to this game, I think the second biggest news this week is that it sounds like Justin Fields is getting benched after a four and two record. Nice. So, 
Russell Wilson coming out, and I have no idea how that's going to look. Um, hmm. hmm. I, I, the Steelers should win this game. It's a new pull. Like I, I don't, I don't see things going smoothly right away for Devontae Adams and the Jets. But I have no idea how Russell Wilson's going to look. Maybe they play two quarterbacks. They haven't officially made Russell Wilson the starter yet either. Mm-mm. Yeah, Sunday night for the Steelers. Give, give me the Steelers. All right, take the Steelers on yep. Sunday night. And then we get the good old double header that uh, that you love so much. A uh, couple of good games. A couple of good games. Uh, the first one is the Ravens against the Bucks. Mm-hmm. Bucks uh, dominated last week. They're starting to look like a football team, a, re- a damn good one too. Yep. The Ravens are the Ravens currently. Um, the Ravens are giving three and a half. Opened up with giving five, but now it's at three and a half. I'm gonna take the uh, I'm gonna take the Ravens. If it was a little bit higher, if, if it was that five or or higher, mm-hmm. I might take the Bucks, but I'm gonna take the Ravens on this one. Okay. So that is my pick for the first game of the Monday night slate. The second one, it is the Chargers and the Cardinals. Uh, by the way, scary moment last week with Jim Harbaugh on the on the sideline. Yeah. That was yeah, crazy. But he, yeah, but he he said uh, this week that he has the heart of a pro athlete, so uh, okay. he's all right. he's all good. Okay, <laughs> but Jim Harbaugh is back on the sidelines in Arizona. It is the Chargers against the Cardinals. Opened up with the Cardinals giving one. It is now the Chargers giving two and a half. Yeah, I was impressed with the Chargers going into Denver last week. Uh, even though they're playing against rookie Bo Nix, they did things defensively to confuse him. Um, Still want to see Justin Herbert kind of air it out on this offense, but that's not going to happen. I think this is the only time this season he threw for over 200 yards last week (laughs) against the Broncos. Yeah, give me the give me the Chargers to win. Um, They go in Arizona and they win this game on uh, ESPN Plus. We need somebody's login. I got you, Derek. I got right, you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, All right. Well, that is it for the producer pickums. Yeah, I'm. I'm waiting for Justin Herbert to kind of to air it out. Like you said, and I I thought that that was going to be a huge, a huge point of emphasis. For Not this in offense. this Greg Roman offense. Yeah, it's uh, it's very, very interesting. Very interesting yes. indeed. But uh, all right, man. Well, thank you for stopping by. Not you, but thank you for everybody for for listening to the podcast. Um, and that is our producer pickums, and we'll be back at it next week. Hopefully we do it live and it'll be on Wednesday night, but we will, uh, we will let you know if and when that is going to go down, but all, all signs are pointing to a live broadcast of the practice squad. So we'll have Otis in there. We'll have Pat H in there. Maybe we'll get tacky. Maybe we'll get some of the Ernie's get, get the whole gang back to get the whole squatters, all the squatters all the squad. in one group. Full squad, full, full squad, squad go baby. All right, baby. All right. So let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. I am Walter. You got That is Derek Papa. This is the Packers Squad, and we will talk to you next week. Adios.